Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, my, I'm Mark Headley, and uh, welcome to another episode of Scientology Stories. And um, we're going to bring Claire in here today. There she is. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just did a, uh, another video on Mark Fisher's channel. And I think we went for like two hours and 45 minutes. Yeah, I was texting you being like, okay, get done now. We're going live at 6 p.m. Hurry yeah. up. We did like an int base deep dive video. Mm -hmm. um, it was pretty fun. Um, yeah, so we are going to talk about something that happened. When did this happen? When did we do this? <clears throat> this was um, 2000 and... Six. 2006. 2006. Okay. Yep. That's exactly right. Because it was during the time that OSA, Office of Special Affairs, Scientology's spy wing, um, it was when OSA was spying on us is when we did this. Big time. And, and also, which more memorable in my mind, I mean, I always told you OSA was spying on, on us and you were like, eh, yeah, yeah. And well, I'm you like, you didn't no no people okay but, no no but this was you didn't when say our first, Osa. this was the year that the our first son had been born yeah which you is didn't more say Osa was spying on us you just thought somebody was spying on well us. you know <laughs> I mean it was obvious who else was gonna spy on us well, we were just nobodies I know but we I didn't see Osa I was like okay where are they at I don't see them. Yeah, you were um, like, they're not going to bother with us. I was us. like, what do they Who care about us? What would they care? Mm -hmm. But uh, evidently they do care. We did find this out. They we were did. definitely spying on us in a big way. Um, so we, Claire and I escaped from the international headquarters of Scientology after working over there, working there for over a decade. We escaped in January of 2005. Yep. In... In mid-2005, we were contacted by somebody, and this person wanted to know what had happened to another person that was at the imp base. That's yes. all I'm going to say. And But this person tracked us down in the middle of Missouri. We didn't, we weren't, we weren't on. We were minding the, our own business. Yeah. We weren't on the YouTubes. Little, uh, you know, earth, <laughs> earth beings like, <laughs> what? we'll pretend we were never had anything to do with a big nasty cult yes we were we when we left scientology we literally just disappeared we yeah. were in the middle of lee summit missouri yes. i was fixing computers claire was a server at a restaurant called the pizza shop yes and um that's what we were doing and we yep. didn't want to have anything to do with scientology we were just happy not to be there, living our lives, um, having fun, watching movies, <laughs> sleeping at night, eating at restaurants. Mm -hmm. um, we were living it up. And um, I want to say that probably by April, we left in January, by April or May, um, Scientology was like, you need to come back. You need to get back here. Yeah, and not and we're not talking figuratively. Like we're talking Warren McShane, who is the top legal guy in Religious Technology Center, called us in April and said, <clears throat> Yes, um, your suppressive person declare is on hold, but you have to come back and do the rehabilitation project for us. And we yeah. were like, uh, no, I'm that's like, a hard no. I'm like, I got a lease, dude. Like, I don't know. We have don't know jobs what... <laughs> now. Uh, Claire is almost going to get pregnant any day now. And uh, yeah, no, that's not happening. <laughs> yeah, we're not. And not only are we not coming back, we're definitely not coming back to do the re the rehabilitation project for us. That's not happening. Yes. If we come back, it's going to be to get the stuff. Like, they still had our stuff. Like all of our stuff, all of our clothes. Yeah. We we both left with the clothes on our backs, basically. Yeah. Like I had nothing else. 
Yeah. And we even had to leave behind our dog. Poor dog. Yeah. That was that was awful. But anyway, we got So the back. only reason I'm telling you all this is so you know, like we were there from I was at the imp base from 1990 to 2005, January 2005. And Claire was there from what? 92, 91? 91. 91 to January 2005. And then when we left, they declared us suppressive people. And we were just talking to Kirsten Catano, Warren McShane, a guy by the name of Greg Wilhair, who's also in Religious Technology Center. Yep. And 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 to be fair, Claire was talking to these people. I I did not talk to these people at all. I did not want to have anything to do with them. Yep. I didn't want to I didn't give a toot about anything. Claire was the being the civil one of the two of us that would actually take their calls. Yeah, and, well, because I was, I was like, if I can talk to my mother ever again, sure. I would like to. Sure. Uh, and I, yeah. And my sister was in the Sea Org, and my mother was in the Sea Org, so I knew I wasn't going to talk to them. So I was sort of like, okay, I'm good. I'm not going to be able to talk to them, and they can't talk to me. Okay, fine. I don't, I don't mind. It's not the big deal to me. Um, just because that's how it works in Scientology. If you leave, you can't talk to the people that stay. It's sort of, it's part of the deal. Ooh. Oopsies. I just poured over a water. Sorry. Anyway. Do I so, need to send down the uh, cleanup crew with paper no, no, towels it, or we're I, good? Hey, I use a BT hey. activated and I caught it <laughs> pre-spill. It, it Ooh, knocked over, but I was like, BT's activate. And I... <laughs> <laughs> grabbed it you know this is how i roll wonderful anyway so january 2005 we escape they declare us suppressive people the day after claire left we were declared that's it they didn't ask we didn't have a conversation they declared us suppressive persons and they, they told didn't everybody tell us that but they told yeah. all of our family that i told everybody so that was a done deal <laughs> yep okay i end up getting wooed back to los angeles and we'll cover that in another video. Yeah. And so I start working there in, let's say, May. May, uh, April, May of 2006. And then I end up making, I was, we were making good money in Lee Summit. I was making good money and Claire was doing amazing. Yeah. And, um, and By then Claire. Lee Summit standards anyway. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, we were doing <laughs> just fine. We, we were, were. We were. We were covering our bills and saving at a very high rate, like right off the bat. Within, yeah. I'm gonna say three weeks, we were like, oh, this is easy. Yeah, yeah, with, with your dad's help, he he sure. signed on an apartment with us. Yeah. Three weeks after we landed, or I got there anyway. So we had our own apartment and we were paying it by ourselves. He just co-signed because we were looked like drug dealers on paper. We had no because, credit. Yeah, <laughs> we, we had no credit. We were in As our thirties. Pretty standard. With, <laughs> and it wasn't even this is the car people were very <laughs> clear to tell me, no, no, you don't have bad credit. Bad credit would be great for you right now. You have no credit. You've and we're never like, had but, a. But that's good, right? We <laughs> we've never been late on a payment. They're like, no. That's no. really bad. They're like bad it looks credit. Like you're a drug dealer. <laughs> bad credit is better than no credit. Like, yes. I don't even think we had a score. Like no. when they put in our name, it yeah. just said no records can be found. Right, because we had never had a credit card. <laughs> We've never borrowed money or paid it back ever. And I was thirty, and you were thirty-two. And yeah. so they were like, have you never bought anything? And we were like, well, sure, we have bought stuff, but we paid cash. And they're like, that's what drug dealers do. And we're like, well, we're not drug dealers. And they're like, yep, the credit bureaus don't listen to that. So you're SOL. <laughs> anyway, so we end up moving back to Los Angeles in mid-2005. Like, yeah. I moved back in like April or May and just was going to see, let, let's see what happens you stay in in Lee Summit for now because you had a really good job at that point, mm -hmm. and um, we had a car and we were like we were doing stuff. So it's like, eh, let's just uh, see how this goes. And and we had a, a good apartment and yeah. you know it was nice. It was nice. We were in a nice area and all that. So yeah, and we were there was no Scientology anywhere nearby that we needed to worry about, um, and that. 
it just happened to be where my dad lived. He lived in Lee's Summit, Missouri. And so it was like, okay, good. We're going to Lee's Summit, Missouri. Um, it wasn't like we, it was no great master plan on how we ended up there. It just happened to be where my dad was. And I really enjoyed it there, to yeah. be honest. It was very kind of coming from the Sea Org to go to Lee's Summit was like it was like we were on full-time vacation basically yep. yeah <laughs> i went i went from the hole at the base <laughs> to my biggest drama was like catching up with the menu during lunch hour rush <laughs> yeah. in lee summit missouri <laughs> it was like you know what i got this i can figure this out i'm gonna be good at this i can tell just give me time people <laughs> i remember that claire would come home and she would be like oh I was like, how'd it go? And, you know, she's like, oh, I'm the only person in the restaurant who's old enough to pour beer yeah. besides the manager. <laughs> so Claire's um, Claire's new problems were that she had to pour a ton of beer. Like I was like, what? And even I was thinking when she was telling me, oh, I'm the only one who can pour. So I have to do all anybody who orders a beer. I have to bring it to them, even if I'm not their server, because these girls, the other girls or the other servers that work there are from, you know, they come and work after school and they can't handle um, alcohol. Which and was I remember, pretty funny because I'd never even drunk a beer. <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing that was funny to me was like can you imagine this is our like the struggle is real you know there's nobody else who can who can run the tap anyway okay so we moved to california and and remember i told you this guy had contact this guy with this person who contacted us contacted us when we were in missouri to find out about this other person and when we ended up moving back to los angeles that's all this person would talk about was yeah. this person that was still at the end base and it got to a point where we were like it was it was <sighs> stressful it was it was stressful. it was it was sort of like it was sort of like this person could not move on with their life unless they knew about this other person yeah and and from the spy files this is the craziest thing the other person was in the exact same boat other person was could not move on with their life for years this person had left the international the person that was talking to us and um they contacted us in missouri he had been he left the sea organization he wasn't in scientology anymore and he wasn't in the sea org but this other person was still at the international base um and now this was maybe two years after that, maybe even more that had gone by. And this person just didn't, was like, what's with this other person? Yeah, there, was, the, there was no closure, yeah. no capacity to understand anything that had happened. Yeah. So much so that the night I escaped, I tried to call Claire, she didn't answer she was interrogating this other person because they were still hung up on this other person that had escaped and they yeah. couldn't move on with their life anyway this went on for years and we were trying to figure out how we could get this person out of the property but we didn't know if they wanted to even leave and this went on for months and months and eventually we found somebody that could get onto the property that wasn't a Scientologist. And this person um, was delivering supplies to the property, but he was also delivering supplies to the exact place where we had info that this person now may be working. They worked in a completely other different area. Right, but like then the exact they, building on the property. There are then, many buildings on that property. Yeah, but then they got moved to the building that this guy would deliver things to. So this was sort of like, oh, if we ever have a chance, this is it. 
well, this guy would deliver things to the area that I was over. And I was the one who actually used to sign the checks and the purchase orders to this vendor to bring stuffing there. So I knew the guy really well. I would sign checks for years to this company. And so when we started talking to him, it was like, yeah, I know you and I know this person and I know where this person works. And he would tell us who was working there of the people that we knew and be like, oh, that person's not there anymore, but this new person's there. And we'd be like, oh, really? Like <laughs> it would be just saying the name of the person in that area, we would know, oh, it's going down because if that yeah. person's working in that area, it's like apocalypse now up there. Anyway, we still could not get a direct message to this person and we could not get a direct message back from that person. And yeah. that was sort of messing this whole thing up. Yeah. And I, I think it's fair to say that there were enough similarities in this situation, like with how barely I escaped that um, we could really relate to the inability to move on and the, the need for closure and the need for like, what's really happening? Where's this person's mind at? And all that, like it was really, and we obviously knew both people very yeah. well. So I, yeah. I worked with one of the people for many, many years and Claire worked mm -hmm. with the other person for many, many years. Yeah. So we knew, we knew so them. It was personal. Yeah, it, we knew yeah. them. So we couldn't figure out how we were going to get a We basically needed to be able to talk to this person on the phone. That, that's really what it boiled down to. We needed to be able to put these two people to talk to. And the reason we're being very um, general about this and not mentioning names is because these people don't want anything to do with Scientology or any of this. Which is perfectly and, fine. And we're respecting their rights. So you may have heard parts or a part a version or something. No one has ever explained this the way we're going to explain it today. We're doing a deep dive, folks. We're going to blow your that minds. Never been done in the history of the base, and I actually, I don't know that it's ever been done since. To be fair. Well, yeah. We're not going to, we're going to say this has been done other times, maybe not exactly like this, yeah, true. but true. regardless, when Osa watches this video, they're going to find out what happened in 2006. That's how, that's how far Scientology is behind. Yeah. They don't know what they happened. Don't. They just they know don't. that one day someone vanished and they have no idea how it happened. And so we're going to tell them. And some of you are like, oh, why are you giving it away? Well, it happened in 2006. Yeah. <laughs> and we've done many more extravagant, crazy things since then. But yeah. this is just a great way we did it. And the, the part that's the craziest part is that we were trying to do it. We couldn't do this. It wasn't working. And then Claire... Was let me explain this it. part. Let, yeah. let, let's, let me explain this part. Okay. Thanks, honey. So this was really stressful. You know, I had a newborn baby and, um, and I knew that Mark was working so hard to help this person so, so hard. And it wasn't, it just was taking forever dragging out. Like you must've driven out to that, to that vendor, like five times from, from where we lived at the time. Anyway, I am inherently a problem solver, you know, whatever, call me weird, call me whatever you want, want to call me. It's okay. I, I, I accept it all. But one day I had this dream so, and I was like, is somebody is somebody <laughs> bashing problem solvers all no, of a sudden. I didn't but, know this was a thing. No, but when it's <laughs> you, a dream, you problem when solver. When it's an elaborate dream and that's where the solution comes from it's kind of like a little eh. anyway so i had this dream and in the dream i realized just very clearly step by step how we could get this person a phone and i knew that this person liked to order things through mail order so my dream was that we we got a package from a mail order company 
and we replicated it exactly and inserted a phone into a shoe and and it worked and the the person got the phone and called but this is your dream this was my dream and the whole yes. key the whole key to unraveling it and the whole key to the solution in my dream was to have an unfiltered communication that was not monitored by Scientology so I had this whole dream and I was like wow that was like next level and then I waited like two or three weeks because you guys were deep in planning and all this and 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 then when I realized the plans were just kind of stalling out I was like okay honey I got to tell you something you're probably gonna think I'm completely crazy but I told you my whole dream yeah okay <laughs> so now I'll pick it up from here okay okay so she tells us this idea and I think hmm it's a good idea but it has a it has a, a a huge flaw in that is that at the international headquarters and if you're in the sea organization any of the mail coming is opened and gone through so if you send somebody a, something in a box security is going to open up the box and they're going to go through all the stuff in that box that's it you're not gonna if you hide a phone in there they're gonna find the phone okay so that's that so it's a good idea but it there's that one little part where it's like eh, they're gonna was, they're gonna open it it was susceptible to uh um, interception interception yeah okay now i'm thinking and i'm racking my brain and i remembered the security guards were how do you want to say this? They had the a predilection to going through certain packages. Yeah. And they were perverts. How about that? <laughs> the security guards were perverts. So the security guards would go through people's stuff and they would go through their mail, read all the mail. And if, and if a family member said, hey, you haven't come to see us in a long time and you said you would and you didn't, well, then that person can be labeled a certain type of PTS, a potential trouble source. And they have to get in, they get in trouble and they have to sort that out. But um, th that's their reasoning for going through all the mail. Why they would open up somebody's package from Eddie Bauer, that's sort of like ridiculous. Why are you doing that? You don't need to do that. But they would, and it was perfectly fine for them to do it um jackson is jackson in here yes I was just he thinking. is I jackson <laughs> jackson can confirm jackson to this knows. Jackson yeah, knows i'm not what saying we're talking about. jackson no, was a security jackson. chief i'm not saying he was and, a perv no but and jackson kenny campbellman already, had already left many <laughs> several years before this all took place yes yeah, that's true but he he can confirm the players in this yes <laughs> anyway so i had remembered that the the security guards had actually been gotten in trouble for opening victoria's secret packages so and in some cases even trying on said contents i wasn't gonna go there but okay fine either yeah, way just saying you know but regardless somebody said like some in rtc or david miscavige or somebody who found out hey these guys are opening up gals uh packages and trying on their undergarments um, I said, well, why are they opening Victoria's Secret packages? Because obviously, uh, we know what's coming from Victoria's Secret. Ding. I thought, I got it. The person we're going to send, we're going to send them a Victoria's Secret package. Security guards can't open those. And that's how we do it. We still stand, uh, send a shoe. So if they do open it, it's a shoe. And what are they going to going to try on the shoes? Holy moly, if they're still up to that. But anyway, um, yeah. Oh, Scientology is not weird. Male security guards are, trailing, are trying on female undergarments that other people were ordering. Anyway, so we know they can't open security, uh, can't open the Victoria's Secret packages. So we go, okay, how are we going to do this? So what we do is we order a package from Victoria's Secret to us. Yep. And we order some shoes. We order the stuff that's going to work for this person that this person 
would possibly order. Even so the or- right sizes and everything. Like yeah. Exactly an exact replica. Yeah. Yeah. So we order all that stuff. We then scan the labels and everything on the package and we redo all that stuff. So it, it's a Victoria's Secret box, it's a Victoria's Secret label. But instead of going the return going back to Victoria's Secret, it's going to uh, you know a random PO box yeah, that v- come would come to us. VSC uh returns. Burbank, yeah. you know, whatever. <laughs> VSC returns Burbank, California. <laughs> and but we do it enough, it looks totally like it came from Victoria's Secret. Yes. There's no indication that it came from us. Yep. Um, so we do all that, and then we're and trying then, to figure out. And again, out, just to reiterate, to respond to some of the comments. Yeah. This this we're talking about events that took place in two thousand and six. <laughs> yeah, and we have loosely told some yes. of this over the years, but we've never told it in exact detail that we're yeah. going to go to tonight. Yeah. And like I said, it happened back in 2006. So we've so cats we, out of the bag in terms yeah. of, you know, whatever. But hey, maybe it will inspire other people to come up with newer, fresher ideas. So yeah. there you have it. <laughs> okay. So we've got the package. We've got all the labels. We've got the return envelope. Mm-hmm. Um, or the return label or what we've generated everything so that it looks even if you wanted to return the shoes or you wanted to return everything um, we had the bag or whatever they needed to be, the label to put back on the box to send it back to us yep prepaid everything and yeah. again the whole strategy here was to open up an unfiltered communication line where the lies Scientology had told to each of these involved people could be walked back and yeah. it could just be open communication. Yeah. So they told, they, it was a couple. If you haven't figured that out, it was a couple. <laughs> um, the guy was kicked out or escaped and the girl tried to escape and wasn't allowed to. Oh, she, she was tried- kidnapped on the highway. She was yeah. shoved into a van. Yeah, yeah, she tried to go with the husband and they literally drove up to a van and threw her in the van and dro- brought her back to the property. Yep. Okay, so, she, and she was like, but I don't know what happened to him. And they just told him, oh, she wants a divorce. And they told her, mm-hmm. oh, he wants a divorce. And but they, they never- actually tried to pay him a large sum of money to walk away and yeah. never talk to her ever again. And he refused that. Yeah. So... They'd lied to both of them about how each other had felt, but they knew that wasn't the case. It was weird. Like they both knew Mm -hmm. that that wasn't what the other one would do. And that was where the hang up was coming from. They were both like, but she wouldn't do that, but he wouldn't do that. And so it never worked. And they never could get over it because it it wasn't true. Yep. Okay, so we get this package. We buy a burner phone, and and we're also the. I'm trying to figure this. the The guy wants to write Ben her the letter to this person <laughs> to explain yeah. everything. But we're like, dude, and we're, we're like, sen- no, no, that's we're not sending her a phone, start. and we don't yeah. want them to find your, you know, your phone book of a letter in this package. Yeah. So somehow I think we convince him to make it like two pages in the end or something. And mild, gentle, gentle. Also, yeah, yeah, like I, I love, I still love you. I still want to be with <laughs> you. Um, Let's focus you know, on what matters here. Yeah, That's not 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 the back cult, in 70. not the C word. <laughs> yeah. Not that Elrod Hubbard is a fraud. Yeah. I mean, sure, all of that will come. Yeah come to pass that will sort itself out yeah. when the person is still there that's not what you want to lead with <laughs> yes okay so we get the phone he gets a letter he puts the letter we we bought some shoes a pair of jeans and then like a top i want to say yep 
We put the phone in the sh- one of the shoes. It was a very, very, this is before, um, I want to say this is even before iPhones. This is when you could get like a Nokia tiny little burner phone, flip phone, yeah. that you could slide into a shoe and no one would ever know it was yeah, and then And then even separate to that, in the shirt, there was a letter folded up. So that way, if the phone got No, detected, it was in the jeans. The, the letter was oh, in the, the jeans. jeans. Yes, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. So- we put a letter in the jeans, a f- phone in the shoe, and I think there was a top in there. I want to say there was a top. We wanted to put something on top. So if they dug through, they'd hit the shirt. And then if they went to the jeans, they wouldn't go through the pockets of a <laughs> jeans from Victoria's Secret. And certainly, they're not going to open up the shoes, we hope. Yep. Okay. So we do this whole thing. We send it. Nothing we felt, happens. We felt very 007, by the way. Yes. In all we're this, like, we were like, and, and I, and, w- meanwhile, I'm like, I can't believe we're actually doing this. This is from my dream. Like, yes. wow, way to go uh, on trying this out. <laughs> yeah. And the, we have a tracking, we can track it so we can see like, oh, it's going to get delivered tomorrow. And it's been delivered and nothing and nothing and nothing and nothing happens and he doesn't get any calls on the phone he pro he pre-programmed his number into the phone and i think even he got a burner or maybe i don't remember that part but either way even if they call the number it would be like whose number is that we don't know yeah. but it was his number and he had a burner phone or whatever yeah. anyway he doesn't get any calls and we don't hear anything. Then one day out of nowhere, we get the box back and he goes through the box and he's like, there's no phone. The shoes got returned. The top got returned and the jeans got returned, but there was no phone. And so we're like, that's so weird. And we're like a week goes by and we're just like nothing. He's like, no. And we're like, gosh, that's so weird. And we're like, damn, security must have found yeah. it. Yeah, we're and like, they must they have just have, said they must have just sent it back. Yeah, they must have taken the phone and the letter, and then they send it back. And um, we're like, ah, it was a good try. We had a, it was, I mean, it, it was what it was. We blew a hundred bucks on Victoria's Secret merch and a phone and, and, and a phone. Yeah, okay. Anyway, so like a week or two goes by. I want to say it's about a week and then Claire and I are talking and then we're like, well, wait a minute. Did they take the letter? Like we knew they took the phone, but we're like, did they take the letter? And um, the guy goes, oh, I didn't check if they took the letter. And so we're like, oh, and he goes and he goes, no, the letter's still. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, the letter (laughs) was from her. She wrote a letter and put it in the jeans, took the phone and sent it back to him. And so we're, we're literally like on the phone with him. He's like, holy shit, there's a letter. And and it's a big letter from her answering his letter. And then I'm like, oh my God, dude, call the freaking phone or send it a messenger. And we're like, oh, we can't do that. Because if you have a burner phone at the international base, if you're not supposed to have a phone, you don't have a phone yeah so if you're just sitting there one of those like remember recently everyone was like if you have a silent (sighs) if you have a hidden phone yes turn off the alarm it was one of those kind of situations yeah like you didn't want to let anyone in on the fact that you had an unauthorized phone yeah that would be that's super super sketch for a sea org member to have a phone is already weird for them to have a burner phone it's like Oh, you're in trouble. You're going yeah. to the RPF. We know you're up to no good. Okay. So, oh, I just I literally, I have a way of putting oh. my feet under my chair. And whenever I do that, it lowers the chair and like, then smashes my PTs, foot. PTs deactivate. Yeah. PTs power down. Okay. I take it easy for a second. Okay. So he gets a letter. She got the phone. She answers it. To, and also, 
it, it, this is not a letter for us. So I don't even think that I ever heard. I mean, he told some, he read the letter to you, I'm pretty sure, because yep. you were kind of coaching him on, we can't kind blow of. this. No, so you got to, this has to be very delicately handled so yep. that we can pull this off. So she I was, got, I got it. And yeah. So she, Claire was sort of coaching him on what to sell or what to say. Okay. So. We know now she got the phone and now she's written him a letter. And so we're like, this is it. We got this. We're going to be figure this out. Yeah. And again, to reiterate, we knew from both at from both ends of this that the entire problem of why this thing wouldn't resolve is because of the lies Scientology had inserted on both ends. And so our approach was open up a you know, let, yeah, let, let them talk to each other and just talk. sort it out. Yep. Okay. So that happens. They go back and forth. And eventually what ends up happening is that she does call him on her phone and she did it. She had to do it like at a really late at night and go mm -hmm. into a bathroom and, you know, get and go into a stall and be like, okay, you know, da, 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 da. And then they, they, so that's how they were. She could only call him when she could. And so he is, they're having these calls, but these are going on for weeks where they're yep. going back and forth. And, and now, and I didn't know this, but this person's mother, the person that we sent the phone to, that person's mother was also in the Sea Org. And I didn't know that. So she, she was sort of like, I can get out, but how are we going to get my mom out? And then what are we, and how, what's going to happen with her? And anyway, so it's like, okay, fine. We can sort that out too. If we can get you out, we can get the mom out. The mom was in another place, either in Florida or in Los Angeles. We could just drive up and tell her, Hey, come outside, get in the car. We got her. Um, the imp base is a little more complicated. So we, we eventually get to the point where she wants to leave, but she was trying to leave the Sea Org for so long that she was restricted to the property and she wasn't allowed to leave. Mm -hmm. And she was also under watch and she wasn't allowed to go to, like staff go to events in Los Angeles when they have a big Scientology convention. Sometimes the staff from the Imp base were allowed to go to those. She wasn't allowed to go to those things. She had to be watched. She was always having to be with somebody. So the only way we were gonna get her out is if we broke her out. Yep. And so then it was sort of like they had resolved that as soon as we figure out how to break her out, she wants out. But, and, and if she, if we just try to tell her, oh, just go and say, I want to leave. Otherwise we're going to call the police. She didn't want to do that. No. She didn't want to make it. She didn't want to. And this is, a, this is another dynamic of the C organization. When you're there, you just want to leave, but you don't want to cause problem for the people that you worked with because yep. They're your friends and you've lived with them your whole life, even though they're kind of like the prison guards in the prison, they're still your prison guards. <laughs> they're yeah. your, your prison guards. So there, there was a study on this done, by the way, in uh, trauma and recovery. It's one of the famous books on PTSD where yeah. they kept in that they started studies after World War II on uh, military desertions and they intentionally made the groups five or less so that the loyalty factor would be so intense that you could not desert your fellow people yeah and to me that's th like the sea organization has yeah, the, the same, same thing, thing. yeah yep. there's no whenever there's more than five people they make a new boss and a new set of people yep. so that they're in squads of five yep. that's no squad can be bigger than five right okay so these guys are sorted they know they want to be together and they want to live their lives together one of them's inside the international headquarters of scientology one of them's in los angeles how do we break this person out and we spent 
I'm going to say we spent weeks and weeks trying to figure this out. Yep. And then finally, we came up with a plan. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm going to show you what that is. We're we going to have uh, all kinds of fun graphics here. We for you are, tonight, we do. Folks. Let's just see <laughs> if we can figure this out. If I can do this, shkaboo. Okay. Oh. So it says Scientology and Base Escape, and then it says Gilman Hot Springs, California. Uh, if I could knew how to show this without us, oh, here we go. Look, watch this. I'll just do this. There you go. Um, there you go. Oh, wait. <laughs> uh, there we go. Okay. So this is the int base. This is the Scientology int base in Gilman Hot Springs, California. Now, if you look at this map, it's pretty big. This is about, it's about a mile or so wide and about a mile, little half a mile uh, high in this picture. And yeah. they own some of the mountain and all that. But the in base proper is really where the green is. That's where the base is. That's where the buildings are. On the north side and the south side yeah. of Highway 79. Where the Sea Org members work. <clears throat> and um, it's 500 acres, the Imp base. That's how big it is. Might be like four and change, but we always refer to it as around 450, 500 acres. Yep. And it's a mile wide, like I said. Um, and if you try to break out you really need to get out of the green parts. If you can get from the green parts to <laughs> the brown the dry, parts. Into the arid yeah. desert where there's no help for miles around. That's that's the part where you need to get to. Yeah, to you got to get out of the freedom. green zone, okay? If you can break imagine, out of the green zone. Yeah, imagine the green zone is like, you know, in Hunger Games where they're in a controlled, the cameras, all of that. That's... That's really what we're talking about here. Yeah. And Jackson says it was 525 total. So there you go. There you go. There you go. 500 acres, 525. It's big. It's a lot of property. Yes. Now, okay, fine. So you just got to get from the green to the brown. What? How is that such a big deal? <laughs> oh, the razor the wire. Brown, the brown to safety. Safety isn't represented on this map here, by the way. Yeah. The, the brown section in between the green section and the brown section is razor wire. And that razor wire is called ultra barrier and it's pretty sharp. And here's a picture of it. And this is a photo of the fence. If you see that little bullseye, that is a fence. That's where that bullseye is at that property. And that is the ultra barrier. And it's on both sides. You cannot if you're a regular human with no special athletic or uh, gymnastic abilities, you cannot climb over that without getting cut mm -hmm. <laughs> or without bleeding in some section of your body that has to get over that. It's very hard to climb over this fence without getting spiked and cut. Okay, so that's a barrier. We got to figure that out. Um, okay. The fences also have fence shakers in them. And if you don't know what a fence shaker is, it's like a little container that has a little uh, vial in it and it has some electrical contacts with a little, uh, like ball of mercury. And when you shake it, the mercury slides off to a section where it's not supposed to slide off to, and it sets off a, an alarm and they know somebody shook that section of fence so even if you somehow could manage to get over the ultra barrier you're most likely going to shake that fence and even if you cut the fence it'll set off the fence shakers and they're gonna catch you so yeah. there's that and then um, and then sorry you mentioned the floodlights too right um babe yeah. I got the. I mean, I've been working on this for like forty minutes. Okay, <laughs> I, I got all. I got it all worked I out. I just wanted to make sure. Sorry, I was dealing with a a family <sighs> this incident. This is a picture of a fence shaker. <laughs> We're not skipping ahead, babe. This okay. is all. This all builds. It's got. It's a. It's got a crescendo at a certain point, and in awesome. order to have a crescendo, you have to build. You have to Perfect. go first. We got razor. I, then we I'm, got this. I'm with okay. you all the way, honey. It's all okay, good. Okay. Keep going. Okay. So they have the fence shakers. That's what a fence shaker looks like. You can see the wires going in and out of it. And it has this little detector inside. If it shakes, then 
it sets off a, uh, an alarm. Okay, what about the ground microphones? So if you somehow can manage to get over the fence without shaking it and without getting cut, you also have to walk up to and away from the fence. And they have microphones that are buried in the ground. And I want to say anything over like a, a small animal is going to set off the ground mics. So you got to be able to basically float to the fence. <laughs> and you then, you have like to really hover. activate those uh, BT powers oh, yeah. that they if you're, allege. <laughs> if your BTs can't hold a buck 50, you ain't floating out of this place. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, oh, so you got to get past gosh. the ground mics. Oh, did I mention there's high resolution cameras everywhere? <laughs> so the entire property has what's called a perimeter fence around it, and it's ultra barrier, fence shakers, and cameras. They have oh. them all along the roads, the highway that goes right. There's a if you look right through the middle of this image, there's like a yellow kind of line that kind of snakes through. That's Highway California Highway 79. It splits the property, and there's two tunnels. They have roads that go across, but there's also two tunnels that go underneath the highway from one side of the property to the other. So there's no reason for a staff to have to go onto the highway because they can go to the other side of the property through the tunnel. Gary, I'm just going to put this up real. He says the mics were placed every 50 feet apart under the ground. Mm -hmm. So if you can imagine every 50 feet around this entire property having a ground mic and then having cameras and the ultra barrier and the fan shakers all that yeah and by the way so your image of the camera shows 23 cameras i'm sure there's at least triple that in reality yeah this is like one of those yeah. pictures of like how many satellites are in space i yes. can't zoom out far enough to make the cameras as small as they need to be right. and for us to be able to see them exactly. so okay so if you're keeping track you got ultra barrier you got fence shakers you got ground mics you got cameras so unless you're a ghost that can float and you're transparent you ain't getting out of here <laughs> now if you're gonna break out you should probably break out at night oh they've got high power floodlights so if any one of the cameras ground mics or fence shakers detects or sets off an alarm then they have a button and they just go and if you want to know what kind of flood power, uh, high power floodlights these were, like if you go to a, a high school game and it takes place at night, that's what it looks like. It look and those lights are facing in and out, so you can see if somebody's trying to get to the fence to break out, and if they have broken out, you can see where they are and how far they've gotten on their escape route. Mm -hmm. with all these things okay and those also are pretty much around they kind of cut through this green section above claire is the golden era golf course so there's not really much happening over there that is a public golf course but the golf course kind of butts up against this uh south side of the property and um, that is where those lights are. They light, even if you break onto the golf course, they're gonna be able to spot you, no problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, this is where things get a little cute. It's a Cine Castle. I know my little thing is covering up a little bit about that. That was not planned. <laughs> um, so that's the Cine Castle. And that's over right above me in the far edge where you can see kind of like this, weird circle that's a lake and that's right in front of the city castle and the city castle is that building that has those roads all around it and that uh oddly enough is the building that's very very close to the highway mm -hmm. the person that we're trying to break out works at the city castle this is going to be key later on so the person we're trying to break out 
they work at the city castle and I don't know, they live somewhere on the property, but I'm not exactly sure where, but they definitely are. And they may have, um, yeah, I'm not sure where they lived, but I know that they worked at the city castle. Okay. In the very center of the property, there's the main booth. The main booth is where the security guards, um, control and monitor all of these security measures that we spoke of before. So they have monitors in the main booth that they can kind of pull up any cameras. There is another video room where everything's being recorded and stored and all that good stuff. But everything is monitored by the main booth. So if there's a fence shaker, an alarm will go off, they get notified in the main booth, hey, there's a alarm that went off by the RTC building or by the garage or wherever it is. And that's in the middle of the property. And then all the way over on the other side of the property where that says Sublet Road, there's a little like kind of access road that you have to go all the way to the edge of the screen. And then there's a little drive that goes into that road. And then this road actually leads to a fence that's right there where that little arrow is. And there's a gate that you can walk through that and go right into the property. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you got Cine Castle on one side, Sublet Road on the other, main booth in the middle. Okay. During the day, there's tons of security guards walking around and they're doing inspections and they drive around on their motorcycles and they monitor these alarms and all this stuff. It's pretty much business as usual during the day. At night, there's a security guard that's in the main booth, and that's usually, and Jackson, pipe in in the comments. Jackson used to be the security chief at the International Headquarters of Scientology, so he knows, he can correct me if I get anything a little off, but usually the guy that's in the booth is like the, the boss, the security guard boss, and of, of like the watch chief or yeah, whatever they call it. Yeah, watch chief is what they called it. So okay, there was the day watch chief and the night watch chief, and then the security chief was over both the day watch chief and the night watch chief. There you go. Historically, the guys that you don't want to, this is like this in all of society. If you got somebody, maybe they shouldn't be walking around in the daytime. They got a, a couple sandwiches short of a picnic or just a two cans shy of a six pack or whatever their, their deal is. They're not. <laughs> fit for regular public consumption. Yeah. So you put those folks on the night shift because <laughs> no one's ever going to interact with them. Everything's going to be fine. Um, that's the same way they did it at the base. I think the security guards kind of had to rotate their shifts every once in a while. So one guy just wasn't destined, destined to the night shift forever. But regardless, the night Spanish. shift is Spanish. the sleep Spanish. shift if yeah. you're in security. Yeah. Ain't that's nothing the, happening. They, that, they, that ain't the shining stars of security. No. And, and also, on the night watch. At, at, when people drove by the property, they would yell out the windows, Oh, Xenu's my homeboy, <laughs> or BT's for life, or whatever, yeah. or Scientology, you know, not or, so good. Or nowadays, uh, the Aftermath Foundation can help you. Yeah. Or, um, hip, hip, cheerio, Scientology's gotta go. That's what they were <laughs> chanting at the IES protests. Mark really uh, loved that one, if you, in case you apostate. didn't notice. As soon as I heard that, I was like, that's the best, pro, the most polite <laughs> protest chant ever. Uh, hip, hip, style. cheerio, Scientology's gotta Got to go. Okay, so the main activity that would happen is cars would drive by, yell out the window, scream, or honk their horn, and then security would turn these lights on and take a picture of their license plate. And so uh, that was like the biggest thing that would happen as night is people would drive by and they take pictures of the license plate and then they just search the plate and get the person's info and then write up a report and say, this person drove by and said, you know, Xenu or whatever. Okay. That's really all that happened. And the guards that were there at night were the main, the watch chief in the main booth, just one guard. And then they had what was called the Rover. And the Rover was on a motorcycle. 
And the rover would usually just be driving around on the motorcycle, just checking out stuff, or they'd just be hanging out somewhere. And when there was an alarm or there was something that needed to be checked out, the person who's the watch chief or the main booth guy would say, okay, hey, we've got an alarm over on the south side. And then the rover would get on the security bike. And I think at the time, I want to say it was a Kawasaki 650, like a, uh, I think it was like an XR or an XTR. or Anyway, it was a very high powered um, dual sport. So it could drive on the highway or it could drive on the outside in these roads and the dirt and any of that stuff. Anyway, so the rover would get on the bike and then go investigate the alarm. Okay, we know all this. We know this is how this goes. So this, the, all this comes into play. So we're going to keep going. Here. Okay, so here's the plan. We're going to have somebody and we're going to have them drive their car you see where this little red car is above me? They're going to mm -hmm. drive down this road, down the highway, Highway 79. They're going to drive down this little road on Sublet, and they're going to park right next to where this gate is that leads to the base. And there's lights there. There's cameras there. There's fence, all that stuff. So we know when this car parks there, they're going to know. So that's what we tell this. And this person doesn't know anything about Scientology that we just, somebody we happen to know, hey, bud, for 150 bucks, you drive out to the desert and uh, <laughs> just park somewhere for a few minutes. Yeah, we're not weird. We so, promise. Yeah, not a weird it's request. all well intended. <laughs> yeah, we do this all the time. You just happen to be the first time we talk to you about doing it. Uh, and um, so, yeah, so this guy says, yeah, for 150 bucks, drive out to the desert, park somewhere, go home. Yeah, so that's what we tell them. <laughs> now, the, the reason this is key is because right next to where this person's going to park, this is where they have these fancy bungalows where Tom Cruise stays. Yeah. Also, right on the other side of the highway from that is where Dave Miscavige lives. And then right above that is where Dave is, Davey's uh, office is. So... If anybody goes down here, oh, also at the time, right below that little red X, there's like a little dirt area. Those were all houses that were along this road. And all the people that lived in these houses worked in RTC, Religious Technology Center, the organization that David Miscavige is the head of. They all lived right where this X was. So this is sort of a hot spot um, where people shouldn't just be camped out parking. Security yep. is gonna want, they're gonna be like, we gotta deal with this. This could go sideways very quickly. Yep, and by this time, this was also where one of those houses had been completely renovated for Dan Sherman, who was the Hubbard biographer, the speechwriter, and all that. Yeah, okay, next. When that guy gets there, we tell him, when you get there, you call us and you just say, I'm here and hang up because that's going to start our clock. We know as soon as he gets there, that's it. We're now we're on the We're on, you know, like uh, Ocean's Eleven. It's like, tink. <laughs> yeah. OK, we've got this many. OK, so now it's all math after this. We know he says, I'm here. Perfect. We know they've got a camera there. And the main booth is going to see him. And we know once they see a car just parked there doing nothing, they're going to turn on their floodlights. And that's exactly what they do. He parks, he turns on the floodlights, and then we know the, the they've got an alarm. And that alarm that somebody's there, we, we know somebody's there, we see them, we turn on the lights, verify, yep. That's them. There's a car there. They're not doing anything. They're just sitting in their car. Okay. It's rover time. So they call the rover. Now we know if the rover is at the main booth when this all happens, it's going to take three minutes for that motorcycle 
to get to where they are. Because you got to drive all the way down the highway. Do, 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 do. And then you got to go down that road and turn around. Uh, 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 uh. And then you got to go. Okay. Needs when to you be get there. Music. That's right. When you get there, we tell the guy, when there's, when, after you park, somebody on a motorcycle is going to come and visit you a minute or three and, and, after. And you have to know that somewhere in all of this, this guy was like, okay, you know what, guys? This is the weirdest 150 right. bucks I've ever made in my whole life. That's right. But whatever. And, but you now guys this are is the, nuts, but okay. And this is what we told him. We literally had a script. We said, you drive here, you call us. When they come, they, and within a minute or two or three or four or five, whatever, someone's going to just show up on a motorcycle. It's going to be a security guard. Yeah. Sure enough, he gets there. We say, good, call him. He calls us and says, they're here. So as soon as they pull up on the bike, he calls, they're here, and then he hangs up. And then we told him, like, don't be aggro or anything. Just tell him, you know, you ran out of gas or you're having something weird happened with your car and you didn't want to pull off, but you don't know where a gas station, it's all dark, whatever. Yeah, okay. That, that's actually, you make a really good point. Like if you don't, don't go the aggro route and the chances are that they're going to feel sorry for you. Remember exactly. that most of these people are only there because they want to help people. Yeah, they're not, if you, they're not David Miscavige. They're not yeah. big evil d leaders of billion dollar cults. They just got sucked in at the wrong time at the wrong place. And they're probably genuinely good people for the most part. Yeah. Okay. So he calls us. They're here. We say, good. Hang up. We'll take it from here. Yeah. And then he's off. He can do whatever. When he's done with whatever happens with the security guard, <laughs> Then he's out. He can go home. He's done. We're done. We don't need him anymore. That's it. His work is done. Yep. Why is his work done? Well, I'll tell you. Because we know <laughs> that it's going to take five minutes for that guy on Sublet Road, the rover, to drive back down Sublet Road, get on the highway, and get all the way to the city castle where we're going to send somebody over the fence. Now... When they made the Cine Castle, I was there, and that was the only spot on the property that could hold that amount of weight, like where there was, whatever you call it, uh, bedrock or whatever the soil was that was enough. Uh, it says somebody, Rachel Ortega said, Mark, we need sound effects, please. Put your manners back in. Okay. Now... <laughs> um, Please, Rachel, I'm in the middle of telling that? a story. I'm Do in the middle. Again, honey. Do Put it your again. manners Just... back in. Okay. So, listen. Who says that? We know it's going to take Tom five minutes that. for that guard to get back over to the castle. So, um, so this is our time. So, the main booth's here, Sublet Road. You got the guy in the car, five minutes. You get the idea. Okay. So, that's when we call... The person on the cell phone from the shoe in the Victoria's Secret package and With say you gotta jump phone. over the, you gotta jump over the fence. <laughs> now, the reason the city castle is there is because of that bedrock thing. But also there was a weird thing where they didn't want to have a fence outside of the castle because then you could just see what we were doing at the castle. You could see because we were we're always outside of the castle doing stuff and building stuff and that's really the apron the concrete apron that went all around the city castle was really a workspace for for building stuff and assembling and loading sets in and loading sets out so instead of building a fence they actually have a wall and there's no fence shakers on a wall because a wall don't shake so <laughs> Scottish. So, and then also no ultra barrier because the ultra barrier was attached to the fences. So at the castle, they had these silly little turrets and in between the turrets, there'd be like a little piece of barbed wire that I think maybe had a fence sh shaker on the piece of bob wire. So if you climbed up in a s specific spots, you could just put a pillow, you could just put a ladder, 
The city castle's got ladders galore. So you can just carry a ladder from the city castle, put it up against the fence, put a pillow, bring a pillow, throw it over the fence, and then jump over, just climb right up the ladder, and then just jump onto the pillow. Now, if you could do all that, it only takes 30 seconds to get from the outside of the city castle to the highway. Okay, you know what's more bigger than 30 seconds? Five minutes. There's, I'm not a scientist or anything, but there's like six 30 seconds in a five minutes. So we know that as soon as that guy gets there, we get the call, we call and say, it's your chance, jump over the wall. So this person jumps over the wall and then we say, go, boof, now, Okay, that's happening over there. So now City Castle's activated. That's going. That's moving. Now, what about this guy? Well, he tells the guard after he hangs up from us, and then we call the person and say, go. The guard is like, hey, what's happening? You go, oh, just driving, going to the casino, the Indy Casino, Saboba, or whatever. And he goes, well, why are you pulled over? He goes, I think I'm about to run out of gas, but I don't know where a gas station is, and I, I'm trying to figure out from the map if I can find... Um, there's 10 30 seconds in five minutes, by the way. Told you I wasn't a scientist, yep. um, but I was like, R somehow remind there was a six remind in there. Me at the end um, to, remind me at the end to add a comment that's going to totally <laughs> tie this in with everything happening this weekend. Sure. Okay. okay. So this guy says I'm about to run out of gas. So you go like, <laughs> okay, I don't know what they're going to do. Well, I'll tell you what they did. They went. Which, which we did not see coming, we by the way. We did not see this coming. This was not part of our planning. If you're looking but at, it was a bonus. Like, we were at, like, wow, the gods are on our side. Whatever see, you believe in, it's all going our way. <laughs> we are at the top of the screen now. That where you see where the little red car and the motorcycle are. Yep. That is Sublet Road. And this is a map of the, I guess you'd say the north end of San Jacinto. And this security guard took our guy all the way <laughs> into town to Isn't the Isn't he Arco a good thorough security guard, Jackson? What do you think? Yeah. Way to get rid of the intruder, huh? It's, <laughs> that person was gone. By the time they even got to the gas station <laughs> that person was on the 10 freeway gone yeah. they literally ran out to the highway we had a car waiting not the red car guy we no, had blue car, car guy was waiting over here yeah. and blue car guy blue car he, represents safety well Get blue car, car guy was go. but blue car guy was hang i forgot to mention this but blue car guy was parked on the highway about 30 seconds up the highway. So as soon as this guy said, hey, it's time to go, not only did we call the person and say it's time to go, but then the other guy knew that was his cue to then go and pull up to the highway right by the castle. Then poof, person gets in blue car, and then that's it. <laughs> as now, Mark likes to say, Bob's your uncle. <laughs> Bob's your uncle, baby. Um, so yeah, so... They, um, as far as I know, the lights didn't go on. When she jumped over the fence of the castle, the lights didn't go on. She said she didn't shake the fence. This, like, we, we're very confident that they just saw a ladder up against the fence. And they might not even have noticed that the ladder was up against the fence until it was she was long gone and somebody was cleaning up like hey who left this ladder over here be like ah pick it up put it back in the shop um and, and it was at least two or three years at least before any part of this story became remotely public knowledge and like mark said yeah we've never gone this deep dive on it no we just haven't and we should say too that this was carefully planned to co to coincide with a with a night that David Miscavige was not going to be on the property. Yeah. Why was he not going to be on the property? 
because he was going to be at the IAS event yes, at State Hill. That's right. Which he, ties us into this weekend and the yeah. theme of the weekend. <laughs> yeah, and there were I, I was that's what I was trying to tell you guys earlier. Because at the castle, there's no fences there. They do have barbed wire on the top of the walls, but where these turrets are, they're sort of like a little uh, a little break area where they, they can't put barbed wire around turrets because they have these, you know, block walls, these little lookouts for the arrows between uh, the turrets. But, um, but yeah, so she didn't get cut. I don't think anything happened. I think it was, it was, it was, it was perfect. We paid 150 bucks to red car guy to just pull up and then whatever gas money was getting out there. And that was it. And not only that, but once we got um, the person out, they went on like they went on a trip somewhere. So, and this is how the spy files tie into this is because we think that they were already watching us. But when this happened, they knew we were talking to this person already. Mm -hmm. So yep. when this person and the, and there were there were rumblings about this girl who wanted to get out, and it, they could never the it, David Miscavige's worst nightmare is that this one person could get out. Yep. Um, the person that was trying to get out worked directly for David Miscavige for over a decade. Yep. So that was the risk of her getting into the hands of the enemies, the mm -hmm. SPs, the big bad SPs. So the fact that we were able to break this single person out um, was like a big deal. And so we um, got put under a bigger microscope after this. Yeah. And up until this point, Barney Barnett, who's Shelly Miscavige's father, was being our handyman. So he was coming to our house all the time. He was hanging out. We'd have, he'd get off work and come over and, and him and I would just hang out and have a beer. And we would talk shit about Scientology all night. And one time I think I almost, <laughs> I almost had to drive him home because we, <laughs> I mean, we, we polished off of a, a couple of brewskis enough, enough brewskis that I was like, I don't know if this guy's good to drive. Um, but regardless, um, when we were being after this escape somebody from osa was watching our house and when yeah, they saw we had, barney we had private investigators all over our house we yeah, came to find out it was like which we expected and that's why this person just vaporized out of um any locations that were to be expected because again we know how they work we know what they do and um yeah so there you go yeah the other thing was that Th they were watching our house to see if this person showed up mm -hmm. and who showed up shelly miscavige's dad showed up not this person shelly miscavige's dad is a much larger flap than this person showing up so the fact that when they were there they were like oh we got we don't have the person but we got another person this this is not going to be a good report <laughs> yeah <laughs> that was one of those picking straws okay you get to report yeah this. no 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 you get to report this like no thanks yeah, yeah. kirsten katano Pedersen, thorn jari vinne whatever her um n whatever name, name is. she Whatever she, name she goes yeah. by, whichever husband she's on by now. How about just Kirsten the Witch? How about that? I think we should call her Kirsten Five Names. I think that should be her Kirsten name. Kirsten Five Names? Because I can't remember all her names. I, I now, I, I didn't know like two or three of them, but then people would say, oh no, she was, uh, her maiden name was Thorn. And I was right. like, was well, she married to Eric Jari? Oh yeah, Jari was one of her, but like, but that wasn't her first husband. She was married to, to some other guy before that, that was Vinay. And I was like, Holy, mo the woman of many names, Kirsten. Yeah. Um, but then, um, are the couple still together? I yes. think we can say the couple are still together. Yes. Do they have children? Yes, they have children. Yes. Um, do they have a happy life outside Scientology? Pretty much. Yeah, I'd, I'd say so. I'd, I'd bet on that. Um, 
funny how she married two of my guards. Jackson oh, said. Kirsten. Kirsten married. So who oh, was I the other one? I think, well, I think Eric Jerry might have been a security guard at one point. Correct me mm. if I'm wrong, Jackson. But Kevin know. Catano was definitely a security yes. guard. So Kevin Catano is absolutely one of the one of them. Uh, Jackson, waiting for you. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Okay, we're good. I'm not waiting. If he says something, I'll see it. Yeah. Um, oh, whoop, there he is. Kevin Will Catano. Thorne. Oh. <gasps> uh, no, wait. I wait thought Thorne was her maiden name. That's what I thought. <gasps> we just wait, found what? another husband. <laughs> I thought what? Thorne was the maiden name. I don't know. You got to... We gotta, you gotta confirm. I thought Martha Thorne was her mother. You know, it's funny that we said Thorne and multiple people said Will Thorne. So they know, mm -hmm. the, I mean, other people know as well. Okay. Wow. Okay. okay. Yeah, she was Elizabeth Taylor of the Sea Org. Well, to be fair, no, there were- No, there were multiple Liz gonna, Taylors. That's what I was gonna say. <laughs> to be fair, I knew about 10 of these Elizabeth yeah, Taylors exactly. of the Sea Org. exactly. It was the Sea Org that was the problem, <laughs> not the Liz Taylor and things. Kirsten 6.0. <laughs> <laughs> that's it that's it it's oh, done kirsten okay. 6.0 is her new name <laughs> kirsten 6.0 thank you for that um always who is watching. that always watching always watching kirsten i dig your style i dig your style <laughs> kirsten 6.0 what do you call that. her kirsten oh, 6.0 well because evidently she's been married six times at least that we know of she keeps reinventing her she's like the terminator this Fluffy one t6000 t energetic what? Stephen Burt, uh, Fluffy Wicket said she, she must might... be energetic. Nah. Stephen Burton says, Kirsten, six names. Kirsten six never names. had a seventh husband. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, see, wait. That Thorne we know of. is her maiden name. Martha yes. is her mom. That's Colin was her dad, and he used to be in the GL. Yes. And so. Was Will so Thorne Catherine her brother? Olson, maybe. So, Catherine Olson, I thought Martha uh, went type three. Or some other crazy. In, you know. in Scientology, type three is when you have a psychotic break. Yeah, which is dealt um, with the way they and her mom Lisa did where people die tragically. Yes, they do have problems with people yeah. going crazy and or having mental issues in their um, in their world. Um, I think that's it. We did it. We did it. We uh, got to the Abel end. Abel S. Um, Kirsten Mark Sick. Mark, Mark Kirsten four. Mark Six. Yeah, no, I'm Mark not putting four. my name in her name. No, yeah, that's not your name. Your yours is with a C, honey. I know, but I thought Kirsten Six Point is it's perfect. Kirsten you can't. Who said that? <laughs> or what about Cat Kehoe? Kirsten fill in the blank. Okay, we're done. Kirsten 6.0 was the first one and the best one, and we're sticking with it. You guys okay. can keep going. If you come up with another one, great. But uh, we hope Kirsten, you enjoyed our escape story for tonight. Kirsten alone is good. We all know who it is. I know. Well, but you know, you have. They tell you when you do YouTube, you have to do every video like that person's watching it for the first time. They don't. They're not watching any of your other videos. Yeah. So I don't know if that. For our channel, that's hard because we there's a lot of inside baseball on here. But again, yeah. I always like to define it. And yeah, there you go. Um, Boxer Wing 19 says, yay for happy endings. Yeah, yay, yay for happy endings. Yes. Um, now, this was the very, this was the second person that I broke out of the end base. Yep. Because I broke this one out. That was my first breakout, and that was only about a year earlier. It took yep. me another year to break somebody out. Now I'm doing. We're doing pretty good. We don't always get them out the same way, but but, uh, but as the saying goes, teamwork makes the dream work. Yeah, we're, ooh, we're I like this. Gary we, Jackson uh, Moorhead. I should tell you about my wife and I's use of rubber band to give each other secret messages. Yes, <gasps> Jackson. Like seriously. how many times it's wrapped seriously, around hit your me finger. Up on, how we, <laughs> on, on our escape series that we're going to do. It's going to well, be this epic. Is, well, Scientology stories can be the escape stories too. This is Scientology sure. stories. Yeah. Isn't this an episode of Scientology stories? Yep, it is. Yeah, this is it episode number 24, is. Scientology yeah. stories. This is a Scientology story to top all other Scientology shows. I think this is a good one. Um, you know what? And it just proves, put your imagination and creativity and uh, problem solving skills to good use and you can save people. It really yeah. works, people.
Oh, there's another one. Linda Mickle. Someone said, Pip, Pip, Cheerio. The aftermath will help you blow. I love, I love that. it. That. I love that. I, I didn't hear that. that one. That's a good <laughs> one. I like that. Thank you, Amazing. Linda. Amazing. <laughs> um, Robert Westrom, question. Hey, guys, this might be an ignorant question, but what did you guys think you were you saying were saving, us normal people saving from? Saving us normal people from. Yeah. Oh, saving. You had no interaction with us because you were isolated. Yeah, no, we we were told you guys were all bad and we were saving you from each other. <laughs> That's literally about and, and that the world that was full of um, <laughs> drug dealers, prostitutes yeah. and all kinds of other nefarious people and that the world was a very dangerous place. Yeah. Um, and that anyone out here in the real world only ever flips burgers, which, as we've said before, we love flipping burgers. Yeah. There's, it's quite pleasurable, actually. Yeah. If you can make a living flipping burgers, good for you. Power um, to you. I love burgers. If I if my job was to make burgers, by the way, I make a mean burger. I've, I do too. I've cooked over uh, I've cooked over a thousand burgers since living in the Sea Org. Because we have we have parties and stuff like that. I'll cook up a hundred in one go. I'm you know I'm getting a lot of compliments. I'm not getting a lot of uh, of uh, refunds. Mm -hmm. I'm not selling them, so that's probably not good. Um, what the L says, question from your book. Did you ever pay Roanne Horwich back the 250 she gave you to escape? L. Ron Hubbard's granddaughter gave me the cash to escape the Sea Org. And so Mr I, I have the answer to this. I do too, because they're asking me. Missed your interview with Mark Fisher. I love how they spelled his name with a C. Um, yeah. What's my answer, babe? Rowan actually issued a stop payment on that <laughs> yes. check. So she it did. overdrafted our account, which yeah. we did fix. So yes, you yeah. know, as events turn, yeah. uh, Rowan didn't pay that $250. Nope. We did. Yep. Or actually, I did while Mark was blowed, and then I re reunited with him. You, what do you mean you paid it back? They I had to I deposited funds into our Wells Fargo account to rectify the overdraft that was inflicted when Rowan issued a stop payment on the Oh, check. I see. When you were you still were at long the base. gone. You were still I the... put the money in there yeah. to fix the overdraft and yeah. then I figured out how to get the heck out of there. Yeah, that's I had to burn why, that. That's why I didn't think you would hear you would know the answer to that question. Oh no, I knew. She stopped okay. payment. I remember that that caught it had already stopped payment right after I cashed it. Mm -hmm. Like she gave me the check on the night before I escaped yeah. and I cashed it the next day and then she stopped payment the day after that. Yes. So I had to pay like a, a $45 fans financing fee on that 250 that then the entire thing disappeared and then yep. I had to fill the hole it left. Yep. So yeah, it's all good. And okay. uh, by the way, I took Rowan out to dinner. Um, uh, she, she escaped the Sea Org eventually from that property, and um, and we've met up and had dinners and hung out and traded stories. And, and, and she took care of our dog, so that's we, true. It, it's all good. Oh, you know, everything happens for a reason. and yeah. whatever. <laughs> we have Rowan no and feelings. I are good. <laughs> so thank you, yeah. What the L. Yeah. Um, is Captain Dave on the property at this time? Yeah, we answered that afterwards. So th that's another thing that's worthwhile saying. Because he was away from the property, there were several of the security guards that would be there on the day shift that were his private security guards when he would travel. So the security chief, Kevin Catano, he would often go and the other of the guards would go. So even if they tried to call a guard that was sleeping on the property somewhere and said, hey, get up, we got an alert. It, by the time that person puts on their shoes, our person's long gone on the highway, much less gonna chase them down. So yeah, he <laughs> was not at the property. He was actually in another country, not even only, he wasn't even in the United States when that happened. I got I got to put this comment up because it's a really good- uh, Okay. A really good one, hold on. Hmm. Why would Mark need her to check when he had all that money, that eBay money? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I love Great it. Great That question. is a very good. Yeah. Why do I need 250 bucks from Rowan? <laughs> well, also, I wasn't, it was sort of a bunch of happy accidents. And this is in my book. But 
I was trying, they said I owed them 250 bucks for the eBay fees. So I went to Rowan and said, hey, I need 250 bucks. These guys are saying that I owe them the fees for eBay or shipping or whatever. It's stupid, but I don't have, they have all my money and they're saying I'm still, so they'd already, the amount, the discrepancy was probably like $1,500 or $3,000. But because my personal money was in my account with the money that I had sold from the stuff on eBay, that they were like, well, no, you owe us 3,000 and there's 2750 in there. So you need, to, you need to come up with another 250. So I was like, oh, this is ridiculous. So, but once I got the 250 from her and then I went and went through Claire's purse and got all her cash and went and picked up my pay and got a my few weeks of my sister's money, pay. By the way, that I had to then refigure out thanks hey, to that. Hey, it all worked out in the end. So let's not, uh, let's not, uh, okay. let's not open any... So reopen any wounds that don't need to be opened. Okay, um, those have healed by now. Um, but uh, so when I had all this cash and then I went and said, okay, here's your 250 bucks. They were like, no, it's done. There's no, you we're saying we're missing 250, but you can't give us 250. But I was like, but the money in my account, then, then can I have my money back in my account? And they're like, no, you owe that to us. I'm like, well, then I would, owe you this 250 like you've already taken all the money i had in my account you took that no problem but now you won't take another 250 i was like you can you can I, you got to either give me the money back or or take this money you can't take half the money and not take the rest and they were like no 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 this is the way it is so at that point i was like well, I got about 500 bucks to get the heck out of here now. <laughs> so I was like, if you guys aren't going to play, I just happen to be flush right now with some getting out of town cash. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you. AQT girly for you. Yep. Fluffy Wicked says, question, is it okay tomorrow to donate directly, uh, directly on the Aftermath site? Absolutely. Um, the only reason we do the fundraisers because YouTube gives a hundred percent. They don't even charge a fee. Yeah. So um, if you donate on YouTube, great. For the fundraiser tomorrow, it'll go directly to the Aftermath. Or if you go direct to the Aftermath site, that'll also go directly to the Aftermath. So yep. it doesn't matter, whichever way you want. Yep, absolutely. Thank you for and that yeah, fluffy And wicket. yes, just to reiterate what Mark said, the fundraiser feature on YouTube is amazing. Yes. Uh, we've tested that a few times now, and uh, YouTube covers all the fees, so every dollar raised goes directly and only to the Aftermath Foundation and is used um, to help people escape Scientology, so yes. Yes, Tassie Devil says, Pip Pip Cheerio, Scientology has to go. One, two, three, four, Diction disconnection Discon out the door. Pip Pip Cheerio, Aftermath will help you blow. Nice. I love that. That's amazing. Thank yes. you for that. Thank you for the super chat. Stephen Britton, question. Did you ever learn what happened with the security guards who took red car guy to the gas station? This is the craziest thing. I went to the property, Stephen after all this had happened, after we'd broken this person out. And the same guard that took this guy <laughs> to the gas station was walking down that same road. And I had, um, I was just driving down, I didn't stop, but I got off the highway, went down sub and just driving. And as we were driving by, he waved at me and I yeah. waved back. And were like, you we in the really car? don't know that they ever connected the dots. We don't. Were you know with that. me, babe? We had the kids. We were in yeah. an expedition and we were just driving on the road. Yeah. And we we're like, hey. And he was like, hey. And I was like, what? <laughs> so weird. So but then weird. we found, we did find out shortly after that. And I don't know who, well, we found out after we broke that person out mm -hmm. that they had told them that Claire and I were on a special project at CST. So, Which was total BS, in case you're wondering. Well, because we just disappeared from the Imp base. Some people knew we escaped, but the general staff didn't know that. So there was a story going around that we were on a project for one of the higher organizations and that nobody could know about it. 
Yeah. And I was like, and the reason so, for that is because Mark was a high executive in golden era. So yeah. a lot of people knew and respected him. I had been in religious technology center for eight years. So a lot of people also knew and, you know, whatever I was. So this was their cover story. We yeah. didn't escape. We just were on project. Yeah. And so I realized, cause I kept running into people and they were always very happy to see me. And I thought, that's really weird. The people that weren't in the Sea Org, like my, our families and Claire's family, they were all told we were declared suppressive persons. Yeah. But the people that worked with us were told we were on a project. They wouldn't dare tell them that we had escaped. So, um, yeah, that, uh, that was, it was weird. Um, you guys should just make a Kickstarter to make a movie between Mitch, Mark, and Leah and others. I feel pretty f confident you could make a great motion picture. No major studio needed. Love y'all. Well, thank you, Nikki. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I mean, that's good. That's a making a movie is a big deal. We've been making these videos and that takes a lot. Um, but we but, also uh, have some amazing projects in the works. We so do. Just stand we do. by. You know you what? Just, the sky's the limit. We, well, we love having you all here supporting us. I was sort of making it like a big deal. It would be a big deal to make one of those. And then that way, when they came out, you'd be like, oh, they're making them. <laughs> but then you just went ahead and gave it all away <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Sandra, Sandra Hartley, thank you for the super sticker. We appreciate it. Um, many on the chat here are asking what happened to the mom. Oh, yeah, the mom's out too. We got them all out. All yep. those guys are out. Um, I want to say within a year or so after of that person getting out, the mom got out too. And um, yeah, every in, in our stories, well, most everybody lives ha happily ever after. But in this one, everybody absolutely lived happily ever after even red car guy he's doing great these days um <laughs> heather smith uh that escape was epic tom cruise should play mark in the movie hell knows um <laughs> tom cruise can play me when he makes up the damage he's yeah. got to get out he's got to take giant dumps over all those guys and then he's got to tell what really happened he's got to talk to that surrey kid that's a that's a deal breaker if he doesn't yeah. talk to her yes yeah, and uh and, and, he's gonna... and, and i will note that that always hits a personal nerve for us meaning mark and i because suri was born about six weeks after our first son yeah so to imagine not having talked to our son since he was 10 years old i mean oh my god that's what well not even no it was from six here? wasn't it six uh yeah, so six or ten, but either way, well, like whatever. Our, our, Just to our stop oldest... talking to your kid. That's like, right. what? Like, what the heck? What is wrong with you? What kind yeah. of a rotten human are you? But also, he could do whatever he wants. He could be, he could marry an SP, and they'd still be like, uh, what are we going to do with Tom? He's married to right. an SP. He could do whatever he wants, and they'd still probably let him do it. The fact that he doesn't talk to his kid, hmm. Not super cool. sketch so, gail walkins so thank you okay. for the super sticker gail appreciate it um they try not to let other so members know when people blow yeah that it's a high crime to even um talk about escaping talk about wanting to escape or um talking about somebody else who's escaped all of those things are very very um frowned upon in the c organization thank you for that castle catherine um special agent l what happened to the mother yeah she got out too the mother wasn't at the international headquarters so it wasn't as hard to break the mom out but um they knew that the the other person had already been broken out so it was a little it was just a little weird but in the end we figured it out yeah. Um, and, um, yeah, I think, uh, let's, uh, if anybody else wants, we got another minute or two. Um, anybody else wants to say anything or anybody's got any questions or anything. Um, but I think but it was a good way, one. Yeah, no, thanks for sticking through this with us people. This was, um, we, we, an oldie, but a goodie. Yeah. We, we, I used to tell people this story just, um, Scientologists, if I ran into a Scientologist, I'd be like, well, they'd be like, tell me something that would make me 
think that something's not good at Scientology. And I'd tell them this story. Mm -hmm. And I would be like, that's what we had to do to get a, a couple that wanted to be a couple. That's what we had to do to let them be a couple. That's it. That's all they were trying to do. They and by weren't the trying way, to... this was not a new couple. Like, it, Oh, they've been was... married for years, <laughs> decades before this. This It was yeah. like one of these things like, what's the purpose of this why is there why does there have to be high levels of nonsense connected to everything yeah. so scientology is an overdose of nonsense if anything um thank you for guys for uh, coming in here we'll take care of some business here um i've and got all these uh comments by the way oh, we do okay well yeah. i'll show this and i'll do a few last comics okay. um we got Xenu as my homeboy and tons of other amazing BFG merch can be gotten from the Blown for Good store. And you can, there's a link in the description. Just click on it and go to that. If you want to get a copy of my book, Blown for Good, Behind the Iron Curtain of Scientology, um, where we tell all kinds of int based nonsense, Scientology's um, secret headquarters in the middle of the California desert. Um, do, you have a, do you have a ticker for the SP shop, by the way? Of course I do. Bobbleheads and SP bracelets can be gotten from the SP shop. And, and we just did a, a pre-launch today of brand new Aftermath Foundation merch in honor of the fundraiser happening tomorrow. Oh, I love your face, honey. It's so cute. <laughs> very good. Very good. So go over to the SP shop.com and check out the new Aftermath Foundation merch. Yes. Nice. I didn't even know about that. Yes. Or if you want... You can just go directly to the Aftermath Foundation at theaftermathfoundation.org. And um, yeah, oh, I got to update this. Bobbleheads, SP bracelets, and fake Navy Davy. Fake Navy Davy, yes, of, of, no, our favorite. Fake Navy Davy and his, or is it f Captain Davy and his fake space Navy? I don't know. There's so many Cap names. Captain Chucklesworth, Elrond <laughs> Leprechaun, Chuckles. you know, whatever, whatever name Ron. suits your fancy. Elrond's Leprechaun is one of my favorites. <laughs> Elrond's <laughs> Leprechaun. Yeah. And um, limited edition for one time only. If your kids are misbehaving, you can swap out your elf on the shelf. Yeah. For a Captain Davy, fake Navy, El uh, fake Navy ethics officer. It, to put their uh, ethics in. Also, tomorrow <laughs> during the fundraiser, we're going to show you some secret video that we had captured of um, these little Space Davy Davies being attacked. It's 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 amazing. But we're going to show yeah. some of those videos and photos yeah. and all that good stuff. We have stuff. some really, really fun stuff coming and lots of foundation updates and all kinds of other stuff. So there you go. Yep. Okay, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you for everyone who got all the way to the end of this thing. And um, yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. Um, otherwise, there's going to be after this, there's going to be a card that says video recommended and you can subscribe in the middle and then you can go on a playlist and you can do all kinds of clicketing and clacketing and all over the place. Um, feel free to like and subscribe and do all that clickety clacking. And if and you want to bleep to everyone who watched to the very end, we so yeah. appreciate you. Yeah, and if there's videos you want to see us do or there's something that you've heard we might know something about and you want to hear about it, uh, bleep it a bloop it in the comments down there. And uh, <laughs> I read the comments. Claire reads the comments. Um, if we see it and we like it, we'll blippity bloop it onto the screen here for you. And, uh, yeah, until next time, guys. Thanks a bye lot. Bye-bye.